Immaculate Mary, ha saron fa, that title so wondrous, I've gone and forgotten the words. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, you're very welcome to... Uh, our Mass this afternoon, our opening Mass of our Lord's Virtual Pilgrimage. Especially I want to welcome the HCPT Group 527, who normally fly from Durham Teesside Valley with us when we, we go each year. Members of the Archdiocese of Birmingham Pilgrimage, with whom we meet up every single year. And individual pilgrims from Southwark, Wrexham, Edinburgh, Hallam, Dublin and some from Germany who phoned in today to let us know that they would be taking part in the Mass this afternoon. Yes, we should have been there. We should have been in Lourdes by now, but this is the next best thing that we can do. So thanks very much to everyone who has put so much work and effort into getting us virtually here to Lourdes. The essence of pilgrimage is that we travel together, we support one another in our efforts, we share and encourage one another in our various activities. And as we begin our opening Mass, we can certainly do all those things. So although it is a virtual pilgrimage, it's a real pilgrimage, and all the blessings that will be derived from this virtual pilgrimage will certainly be real, real in all our lives. Lourdes is a blessed place and you will certainly receive many blessings during the next few days if you open your hearts and expect God to bless you. Each of us brings many things, many situations, many people to be remembered in prayer. During the course of the next few days we're going to gather together to pray and to celebrate. Let's also remember each other's intentions as during these next few days with Bernadette, we pray the rosary and give honour to our Blessed Lady who revealed herself as the Immaculate Conception to Bernadette here in Lourdes at the Grotto. I put on the altar as well all the petitions that people have uh, sent in and want to place before Our Lady. We can't do it um, at this moment physically, but we place those petitions on the altar as we begin our celebration of Mass today. And we acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord to give us strength and courage to follow his way better in the future. Lord Jesus, born of a humble mother, you know the stuff of which we are made. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, son of the sinless mother, you take pity on us when we stumble. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, born of a virgin through the Holy Spirit, you grant us that same spirit in our weakness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have been pleased to gladden the world by the resurrection and ascension of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we pray, that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may receive the joys of everlasting life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul came down to Antioch where he spent a short time before continuing his journey to the Galatian country and then through Phrygia, encouraging all the followers. An Alexandrian Jew named Apollos now arrived in Ephesus. He was an eloquent man with a sound knowledge of the scriptures and yet, though he had been given instruction in the way of the Lord and preached with great earnestness and was accurate in all the details he taught about Jesus, he had only experienced the baptism of John. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him speak boldly in the synagogue, they took an interest in him and gave him further instruction about the way. When Apollos thought of crossing over to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote asking the disciples to welcome him. When he, arrived, when he arrived there, he was able by God's grace to help the believers considerably by the energetic way he refuted the Jews in public and demonstrated from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. The word of the Lord. God is king of all the earth. God is King of all the earth. All peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. God is King of all the earth. God is King of all the earth, sing praise with all your skill. God is King over the nations, God reigns on his holy throne. God is King of all the earth. The princes of the peoples are assembled with the people of Abraham's God. The rulers of the earth belong to God, to God who reigns over all. God is king of all the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty God, pants my heart and my lips, as though I were ready to proclaim the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, anything you ask for from the Father, he will grant in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and so your joy will be complete. I have been telling you all this in metaphors, the hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in metaphors, but tell you about the Father in plain words. When that day comes, you will ask in my name. And I do not say that I shall pray to the Father for you, because the Father himself loves you for loving me and believing that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I leave the world to go to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. This year will be definitely a year to remember, not just for us who experienced the onslaught of coronavirus and lockdown, but for generations to come. I'm convinced that 2020 will become an historical marker. People will see history in terms of what happened before 2020 and what happens after. Things will change, things have changed already and they will probably never ever be the same again. All of us will have suffered a lot of stress and anxiety, fear and worry over the last few weeks and months. 
We might even have had the virus ourselves or been close to someone who was struck down by it. Uh, at the same time, there had been many blessings and grace-filled experience for each of us. Now is a time to place our worries and concerns before the Lord through the intercession and mediation of Mary our Mother. Now is the time to count our blessings and give thanks to the Lord through the prayers of Mary. However we have arrived at this point in our lives and through our recent experiences, let's just stop, pause and reflect, knowing that we are close to the Lord as we gather together on pilgrimage and knowing that we're being looked after and cherished by our Blessed Mother. Before Jesus sent his disciples out to preach the message of good news and tell people of the kingdom of God, which was being established, they spent time with him. We're told that they spent three years traveling round with him, walking with him, eating with him, sharing his company, praying with him and listening to his teaching. They were close to Jesus. They truly met Jesus and learned from him at every possible level. Because they knew Jesus, because they had encountered Jesus, because they had met him, they were able to go out and bear witness to him. When Our Lady appeared to Bernadette, the meetings were characterised by a quiet, simple encounter of two young women. When asked how old the lady was, Bernadette replied that she was about the same age as herself. The two women were present to one another in a prayerful, welcoming silence. Mary continued to ask Bernadette to come to the grotto for a fortnight. Over this period of time, it is as if Mary begins to instruct Bernadette in the mysteries of Christ's life, using the spiritual aid of the rosary. Like the apostles, Bernadette had to spend time with Mary, come close to Mary, and learn from her at every possible level. That way, she was entrusted with the message Mary had to come to give. That way, Mary could share with Bernadette her own experiences of the mystery of Christ's life, death and resurrection. As we, as we gather together on our mutual pilgrimage, sorry, on our virtual pilgrimage, it's important for us to open ourselves to the possibility of a real meeting with Jesus through Mary and the example of Bernadette. We need a spirit of quiet, simple encounter. We need to come before the Lord in prayerful, welcoming silence. We can be absolutely sure that Mary will do all she can to help us to experience again the mysteries of Christ's life, death and resurrection. Over these next few days, after the example of Bernadette, we can pray the rosary in such a way as to both learn about and experience in a new and personal way the mysteries of Christ. If we're truly open, if we begin to silence our heart and learn to listen, we will experience joy in deep and genuine ways as we understand that Jesus is Emmanuel, God always with us, no matter what and no matter where. As we pray the sorrowful mysteries with Mary, we will find ourselves witnessing Jesus offering himself totally for the salvation of the world and for our salvation. And we will recognise that Jesus gives his last breath in order to put right what we have messed and marred. We will stand with Mary at the foot of the cross, and with Bernadette we will understand how much we are in need of humility and purification. Through the power of Jesus' resurrection and ascension, we know that we have been set free and called to live his life by the power of his Spirit who has been poured into our hearts. 
Mary was there waiting and praying with the apostles and other disciples as the Holy Spirit came down upon them. She was there as the church was born. As we contemplate her assumption and crowning as Queen of Heaven, we are filled with real and blessed hope. With Bernadette's courageous example, we will also recognise that we have to build the church, which is the body of Christ, and we are the living stones, we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. As we pray the mysteries of light with Mary, and after the example of Bernadette, we begin to realise that even though our world can be a very dark place, especially at this time, Christ has given us the means of filling our hearts and our lives with his light, and thus transforming us into beacons of light and hope for all to experience. There are going to be, these are going to be a very special few days, I'm absolutely sure. And if we open ourselves to the grace of God, if we dispose ourselves, our spirit in silent expectation, then we will be given a new and deeper experience of the mysteries of our Lord. The Lord wants to spend time with us, share with us and teach us. Mary is eager to do all she can to enable this meeting. And Bernadette is showing us the way. So over the next few days, on our virtual pilgrimage with Bernadette, we will pause, be silent, reflect and pray the rosary, allowing the Lord to reveal himself in a deep and awesome and life-changing way to each and every one of us. May we be ready to receive and accept the graces and the blessings that the Lord wants to pour on us through Mary's prayers and Bernadette's intercession. And so now we turn to the Lord in prayer. We have the prayers of the faithful and we join our prayers with the petitions that are on the altar, with the petitions that every single one of you has in your hearts, with all our prayers. We place them now before our good God. In the Gospel, Jesus reminds us that anything we ask for from the Father, he will grant in Jesus' name. Ask, you will receive, and so your joy may be complete. In complete confidence, then, we come before the Lord to make our prayers. We pray for the Church that the Lord's call for penance and prayer may be heeded by all her members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have recourse to the Virgin conceived without sin, that they may experience her motherly care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all pilgrims and organisers of pilgrimages for the people of the town of Lourdes, that they may all know the healing grace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and our world under the threat of the coronavirus pandemic, that the almighty and merciful Lord look with compassion on our afflictions and so lighten our burden and confirm our faith that we may always trust without hesitation in his providential love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick throughout the world, that they may receive healing and come to fullness of life and inner peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who have died since our last pilgrimage to Lourdes and all the dead that through the prayers of our Blessed Lady of Lourdes and St. Bernadette, they may swiftly reach their heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask the prayers of Mary, our Mother, under her title of Our Lady of Lourdes, to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now 
at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the revelation of your Son, Jesus, born of the Immaculate Virgin. Hear these prayers which we confidently make with her intercession, and in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. At this point in our, our ma opening Mass, we would normally have brought the petitions to the altar and we would normally have brought a, a, a lighted candle uh, which would be left burning before the altar during the course of the Mass and at the end of the Mass would be taken down to the grotto. And that candle is to remember all those who have died since our last pilgrimage. So as we're not able to do this physically, let's just pause for a second and remember those who have died that we know of Remember all those who have died since our last pilgrimage. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and this wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ and humble himself to share in our humanity. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, this offering of our humility, which we bring with joy as we commemorate the Blessed Virgin Mary. And grant, we pray, that it may be for us, who are joined to the sacrifice of Christ, our consolation on earth, and our eternal salvation, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you give us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in one chorus of exulting praise as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe return. will make our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. 
I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed by this Paschal Sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that we who honour the memory of the mother of your Son may show forth in our mortal flesh the life of Jesus, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. We'll see one another, hopefully during the course of this week, as we come together for our various celebrations, various Masses, various ceremonies, the rosary, the torchlight procession. Um, we're going to do as much as we possibly can. And, and welcome to, to all our brothers and sisters um, throughout the diocese and throughout the world uh, who, are, who are joining in with our, our celebrations uh, today and throughout the rest of the week. Um, let's pray for one another's intentions. Let's keep one another's intentions in our thoughts and in our minds as we pilgrimage through the rest of the week. I'm going to give you a special blessing now. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you, who know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. I don't know whether to, 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 to chance another hymn at the end just in case I don't remember the words, but let's have a go. And you can sing at home if I get the words wrong. As I kneel before you, as I see your smiling face, every thought every word is lost in your embrace ave maria gratia plena dominus tecum benedicta tuum 